Now staying with uh, the metric system, we have density. Now density is the mass per unit volume of a substance. Uh, the chemical formula for density is mass divided by volume. So let's see how density would play out in a physical science class. So as it turns out, the density of water is 1. And objects with a density less than water will float, and those with a density greater than water will sink. Now let's take this one step further, and here we have a cylinder, and it has various liquid substances placed in it, and it also has some various solid objects placed in it. Notice that our liquids have separated out into different layers, and those separations are due to the density. Honey has the greatest density, so it forms on bottom. Where lamp oil has the lightest density, and so it separates and it uh, sets on top. And so we can go from our uh, smallest density to our greatest density. Now we know the density of water is 1, so that vegetable oil, rubbing oil, and lamp oil have a density less than 1, where everything below water has a density greater than 1. With that said, when we place an object within this tube, the object will rest within its density range. So the cherry tomato has a density less than all of the fluids below it, but the density of the cherry tomato is greater than all of the liquids above it. So we can see a bolt has a density greater than all of the fluids, where the ping pong ball has a density less than all of the fluids. So if an object is sinking, its density is greater than the fluid that it's in. If the object is floating, its density is less than the fluid that it is in. And if the object is in the middle, its density is equal to the fluid that it is in. Now again, the formula for density is mass divided by volume. If we take that simple equation, we can rearrange it and see that mass would equal density times volume, and volume would equal mass divided by density. Now these are not three different equations. They are just simply taking the density equation and rearranging it for each of the components. With that said, we, we can now apply that information to our various problems. Now on this first one, we have orange juice that has a mass of 18 grams, a volume that is unknown, and a density of 6 grams per milliliter. We can use the equation that volume equals our mass divided by our density, and so we would get a volume of 3 milliliters. Now I do want you to notice that mass is measured typically in grams, volume is typically measured in milliliters, and therefore density's units are going to be grams per milliliter. Let's look at number 3. We have our mass and our volume given. We need to solve for density. Density equals mass divided by volume. So 8 divided by 2, we would have a density of 4 grams per milliliter. Number 4, mass is 15 grams. Volume is 5 milliliters. Density equals mass divided by volume. 15 divided by 5, we would get 3 grams per milliliter. Corn oil, our mass is unknown, our volume is 6 milliliters, and our density is 5 grams per milliliter. Mass equals density times volume, so 6 times 5 we would have 30. Now I do want to show you that we would have 6 milliliters times 5 grams per milliliter. 
and that allows our milliliters to cancel out and therefore our units would be 30 grams. Molasses, mass is 21 grams, volume is unknown, density is 7 grams per milliliter. Again, 21 grams divided by 7 grams per milliliter. Our grams would cancel out, and that's written very ugly. So let's try that again. That's 21 grams. So our grams cancels out, leaving milliliters, and we would have an answer of 3 milliliters. Soy sauce, mass equals density times volume, 7.5 times 2. Uh, remember that our milliliters cancel out, and we should have an answer of 15 grams. So always look at how your units cancel out, and just apply this equation to each of these circumstances. Temperature is the measure of the motion of molecules, and the metric standard for temperature is the Kelvin scale. Now this is due to the gas laws, where we look at Boyle's law and Charles' law and uh, the combined gas law within chemistry, and in order for these equations to work, they must be in units of Kelvin. However, uh, when we work in a science lab, Celsius is the unit that is most commonly used. In the United States, we watch the Weather Channel. Temperature is given in Fahrenheit. With this said, we must be able to convert between Celsius, Kelvin, and Fahrenheit. Now, when we look at this, notice that there is no direct conversion between Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So if one must convert between Fahrenheit and Kelvin, they must use Celsius as an intermediate. Now let's look at some equations and how this would play out. Here we are asked to convert body temperature from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Now in order to do that, we will need to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let's set that up. So here I have set up the equation Celsius equals 0.55 times Fahrenheit minus 32. So our Celsius would equal 0.55 times 98.6 minus 32. And therefore it would equal 36.63. Now that we have our Celsius calculated, we can convert to Kelvin. Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273 degrees. So that would be 36.63 plus 273. And we would get an answer of 309.63 Kelvin. Now, I am not concerned about you being able to solve these problems, but where I am concerned is you being able to pick the correct formula in order to do so. So if we were to convert the following to Fahrenheit, because we're solving for Fahrenheit, we would have Fahrenheit equals. Now notice that each of these equations is in Celsius. So Fahrenheit would equal... 1.8 times Celsius plus 32. Uh, many books will say that the equation is Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times Celsius plus 32. Uh, the 9 fifths and the 5 ninths that is in the uh, Celsius equation can be confusing. And since you will be using your calculators we've already converted this to our decimal form. Now with our next group we would convert the following to Celsius. So we have Celsius equals. We're converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So here we would have 0.55 
times Fahrenheit minus 32. Now I am using these equations up here. I have just taken the 9 fifths and the 5 ninths and I've converted those to decimal form as would be required for a calculator. Our third example would be convert the following to Kelvin. So Kelvin would equal, and we know Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Now if we were to convert the next from Celsius uh, from Kelvin to Celsius, Celsius would equal Kelvin minus 273. Now once you have this, we can go back and we can solve. So on number 1, we would have 1.8 times 10 plus 32, and we would do the math, and we would get our answer. On number 6, we would take 0.55 times 32 minus 32 we would get our answer that would be 0 uh, on our next one we would have uh, let's do 13 we have negative 50 plus 273 we do our math and we would have our answer of it looks like 223 and on number 16, we would take 100 minus 273, we would get 100, uh, negative 173. And it is okay to get negative numbers with regards to um, temperature. Now, as always, if you have any questions or confusion, just rewatch the video or come by my classroom. We'll sit down and we'll figure out where you're struggling and uh, we'll take care of that.